a lot of places that I go, campouts and just different events, people are excited to eat food baked in a Dutch oven or often like, oh, I'd love to be able to cook in a Dutch oven, but I don't even know where to begin or how do I get started. So I've decided to make a short series of videos addressing just that subject. Today we're starting at probably the most basic recipes of, of cornbread so that we can get used to the Dutch oven, learn some of the techniques, and see how it is done. If this interests you, watch this. You'll like it. All right, so today we're going to be doing some cornbread. Uh, now, cornbread's a great first dish for people getting used to uh, Dutch oven cooking because, one, it, when you're baking it, it will tell you when it's done. And I'll talk about that and show you that later in the video as we progress. The other thing is it also will help season your Dutch oven. So if you just bought one, it begins the process of uh, getting it ready to cook, getting that nice coating and seasoning inside of it so that you can use it for years and years to come. So we're going to start out, I've got a 12 inch Dutch oven by Lodge here. If you haven't bought one, just some things to consider. Make sure to find one that's got the ridge around the edge because that's what's going to hold your charcoal in place while you're cooking and the feet underneath so that it holds it up off the ground and it allows you to put charcoal underneath it so that that way you can bake in it. The ones without the ridge and without the feet are mostly designed to be used inside your oven at home. Now, since you don't see a control knob anywhere on here for temperature settings, you control the heat in there, you are the control knob. You are the, the temperature gauge. We're gonna control the setting to start out with by how many briquettes we actually use on and underneath the, the Dutch oven to set that internal temperature. Now the guideline that I use personally is you take the diameter of the Dutch oven, which in this case is 12, you're gonna go minus two or minus three for the bottom coals, so that'll take us to nine coals underneath. And then you're gonna go plus three for the coals around the lid, so that'll be 15. Now, that'll get you to an internal temperature of about 350 degrees. Work baking cornbread today at 400 degrees, so we're gonna add about six briquettes, which I already have started. So now we're gonna just start placing these on our plate. Just kind of place them around in a circle to where they're, they'll be around the outside basically of your Dutch oven. Try to space them kind of evenly. For that 400 degree temperature, we're going to use 12 on the bottom. And set our Dutch oven on top of that, right on top of that. Make sure it's sitting level. And then we're gonna go for actually 18 on top. Now, just as a word of advice, when you add that up, 12 and 18, that's 30 charcoal briquettes. Do not start 30 charcoal briquettes in your chimney exactly. Because as they're getting started, some of the ones towards the bottom will burn completely away, or mostly away. Like you notice, this one's actually gotten pretty small. And so you want a couple of extras just in case you don't have full charcoal, so that you can get that good, maintainable heat. Now a couple of these are a little bit small, so I'm going to go ahead and wedge just one or two other small ones in to make it even. Now while that's getting your Dutch oven preheated, we're going to get ready and mix the cornbread. So today we're going to go ahead and mix up uh, a favorite recipe of cornbread that I've used a lot. I will include a clickable link in the description where you can download my recipe and it's in a printable PDF format 
Again, that'll be below in the description. You can use whatever recipe you prefer. Wait a minute. Let me interject a word of caution here. Most of the standard recipes for cornbread are set up for either an 8 by 8 inch square pan or a 10 inch round cake pan. So cooking them in a 12 inch Dutch oven may cause them to spread out and be thinner than you would like. The recipe mentioned in the link below has already been adjusted to account for that size difference. But if you want to use your own recipe, you may have to try it a few times to get the right size batch in order to make it the thickness that you desire. But trial and error is always good to eat and great chance to learn. So now, back to our video. So, real simple recipe. We're gonna go with a cup and a half of yellow cornmeal, cup and a half of all-purpose white flour, quarter cup of sugar, one and a half tablespoons of baking powders, if it all gets in the mix without being blown away, a teaspoon of salt, cup and a half of milk. You can also use a cup and a half of buttermilk for this if you would like. And two cackleberries lightly beaten, also known as eggs. Once you got all your ingredients into the bowl, just go ahead and mix them until they get good and combined. Make sure to scrape the sides so that all your dry ingredients get incorporated into the mix. Also add half cup of your favorite vegetable oil, bacon grease. This is, happens to be some virgin olive oil. And again, just make sure that that all gets preferably mixed in and not splashed onto your table. Once your batter is mixed to the proper consistency, we're gonna go ahead and use our lid lifter. Take the lid off the pan. I suggest you have a trivet or something to set it on so that you're not burning your tabletop or you're not setting it down in the dirt. Go ahead and Splash just a little bit of oil in the bottom of your pan. Make sure to get it mixed around a little bit. Then we're just going to add our batter right on in there. Now once you pour that in, it's going to level itself out. So you can just go ahead, put the lid back on. And we're going to come back. It's going to cook for about 30 minutes. But we're going to come back in about 10 and rotate it so that we can keep our heat even and check it. And we'll go from there. Now, just as a gauge, if you can hold your hand for more than about five, six seconds over the top of that oven, about that high, it's not hot enough. You might want to add a few coals. Same thing down below. You can hold it down here for about six, eight seconds. It's too cool. Go ahead and add one or two coals. But other than that, you should be fine just like that. All right, so this has been on about 10 minutes now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn it because we don't wanna lift the lid and be checking it all the time. That'll let all your heat out. So, but we do need to turn it in case there's hot spots underneath it or on top make sure we get an even cook all the way across. And the way to do that is we're going to start by turning the lid half a turn counterclockwise that adjusts the heat from the top and then we're going to lift the Dutch oven turn it half a turn clockwise set it right back down to adjust the heat on the bottom That'll help us make sure that it bakes evenly all the way across with no burn spots. We'll be back in about 10 more minutes to check on it. 
All right, so now this has been on about a total of 20 minutes. We're going to go ahead. Normally, you know, you want to check it just to see how things are progressing along. So we're going to take our lid off. Got to be careful because today we've got a little bit of wind. And uh, I don't want it blowing after too much. Now, if you look down in this, you can see right around the edge where it's actually starting to pull away from the sides of the Dutch oven. And you're starting to get a little crackle across the top and a little spring back. That tells us our cornbread's just about done. Now it's still a little pale on top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put this lid back on. We're going to set it off the bottom heat though and slow that bottom heat down. Now it'll continue to cook on the bottom because the cast iron itself will retain quite a bit of heat and will be radiating that and continue to cook. We just want to slow it down some and let that top brown up and catch up. Let the middle go ahead and firm up as well and we should be done. We're going to let it sit here for about another 10 minutes. We'll be back to check on it. All right, so we're going to go ahead and check this. It should be done all the way through. Take it off. Oh yeah. You can see how it's got a good golden brown color. You can see the separation from the outer edge where you can almost all stick like a knife down in there without even touching it. And it's good and got a little bit of bounce back to it. So we're ready to go ahead and take this out. So we're just going to simply put a plate on top of it. I advise some uh, good sturdy bake gloves because the Dutch oven will still be hot. Cast iron does hold a lot of heat for a long period of time and we're just going to gently roll it out now look at that you can see that we're getting a nice golden brown color that could have probably gone for just another five minutes or so but as you do this more you'll be able to uh, get a better feel of what you want it to look like so flip this out see how it's gotten that golden brown color it could have gone maybe a little bit longer but again as you get used to that we'll go ahead you can adjust that accordingly we've let it set for a little bit just to cool and, and kind of set up a little bit now let's see what we've got That's good and tender. Got a good airy crumb inside. That looks absolutely beautiful. Let's give it a sample. Oh yeah. Add a good glass of milk with that. And I can make a whole meal right there. So I hope you've enjoyed your time with us today learning about cooking in a Dutch oven, learning to cook cornbread. Uh, I hope you're going to try this at home. Just as a, you know, once you're done cooking with your Dutch oven, one of the main secrets is take care of it. As soon as you get a chance after you're done cooking, wipe it out. Don't use a lot of soap and water, just some hot water. Wipe it out good. Let it get good and dry. Put a thin layer of oil in it, preferably either like vegetable oil or if you buy the, the cast iron conditioning oils, just a very thin layer in it, and it'll be ready to go for your next use. In the meantime, try this out at home. Hit the like button if you liked it. Subscribe so you can catch future videos. Taste the adventure and check out these videos of other recipes.